and over the passage of time, period of time, what was left as pointed out by Dr. Ravan was only limited, very, very limited, small. Several, several provisions came to be applied, no difficulty. But the core of the JNK constitution has remained intact till end, which I will indicate to your lordship. So the, therefore, your lordship will see that it is in 1951 that Yuvraj convened the Constituent Assembly to frame the constitution. What is the authority by which he could do so? His authority to convene the Constituent Assembly has not been questioned anywhere. So therefore, JNK constitution is S is a constitutional document. That's the only conclusion possible. Now my submission is going to be that no matter how widely you interpret the power under 371D, the core of the JNK constitution must remain. And what is that core? So kindly come to JNK constitution. That is in volume 2. So in the first place, the state. So can you itemize the core? I mean, can you just sort of summarize what would be the core? The core I'm indicating that is part 5 and part 6 of the JNK constitution. That is the executive. Uh, that is part 5 is executive and part 6 is the legislature. Additional document volume 2. Additional document. So when the constitution was ushered in, which is a one more provision? Part five is the ex is the executive governor council of part six is the legislature right? and what else? And the legislature. These two. And kindly see. You section, said one more. Section three and four. Sections three. Document company. Document volume. And five. That is part two. Yes. Now the state of Jammu and Kashmir has its origin also in this, its continuation. It originally existed. There is a long history which has been set out in Remnath Khan's case, right up to the Independence 1947 Act. Treaty of Accession, etc. Now, kindly see the territory, section 4. Constitution. The territory, the PDF page is 1 8. The territory of the state shall comprise all territories which on the 15th day of August 1947 were under the sovereignty and sovereignty of the ruler of the state. Now, this is the territorial integrity of the state. Now, there is no provision in the constitution of India by which the JNK constitution can be abrogated. There is no express provision. <coughs> the only question is whether through the root of 371D, this can be achieved. Now, this depends upon the question because Article 370 itself recognizes the Constituent Assembly. And the concept of Constituent Assembly is that it's a sovereign body. 